haven't we lived this life before? The Pleiadians say. Portals are protective devices that are put around planets. The ownership, creation, or making of a portal is an awesome task. There is a frequency energy that must be maintained to hold that portal open. There are many portals on Earth. If we want to continue using the metaphor for a movie recorded on a DVD, one track would for example be a great year, 26,000 years in our terms. Within that track are smaller cycles like that of the Mayan calendar. The founders, when they create the movie, program every cycle to have a meaningful beginning and end, as a part of a bigger plot, which is a part of an even bigger plot. When they think they have decided how to do this and everything is programmed into the energy grids, they are satisfied and leave the planet to play out the script, still watching it from a distance, from other dimensions, to see if their creation was fruitful, the Pleiadians, for example, have always said that nature, which includes us, is a program. But, you may say, how does free will come into the picture then if a planet's history and its development is just a script being played out? Well, that's the exciting part. If a film producer, who is a creator god in his own right when he makes a movie, completes a film, the plot is set in stone. What's in the movie is what you get, you can't change the plot, you can only observe what others play out on the screen. In real life it's different. The plot is made in a very similar fashion as a movie, but the actors, such as you and I, have free will and can change the plot with our thoughts and actions, at least to a certain extent. If we couldn't, there wouldn't be an experiment, and no real experiences, because the outcome would always be what was programmed to begin with. Hence, as it is, the movie can end totally different from how the producers, the founders, had intended, which would usually be to their liking, unless the ending is destructive. Now, after have entered 2012 in our energy grid we are completing a great year cycle and are beginning anew. This means we are at the end of an old species and in the creation of a new. Homo sapiens will not be the same species after the nanosecond. Always, at the end of a great year, the life forms who are being bombarded with the geometry of light, traveling mainly on gamma rays, from the sun, the local central sun, Alcyone, and the galactic center, due to the lineup of these three relay stations, will have their DNA significantly upgraded. And this is being done without the necessity of any technology, it's a natural process. However, it's up to us how much advantage we take from this free ride we are on. Either way, we are moving from being Homo sapiens, or Homo sapiens sapiens, to becoming Homo nova, the, the new human. This means we are becoming much more multidimensional and can perceive things along the lines of time. The purpose of this particular end time was the great healing along the lines of time. Linear time is collapsing, and our past and future are trying to merge with our constant present. It's up to us how much we let it, and how much fear will steer our personal destiny. A person who is terrified over what is happening to them and can't cope with the changes they are facing, inside themselves and from outside events, will not make it. The failure will be on a gradient scale, from remaining in a state of extreme anxiety, to committing suicide. In fact, all that's happening to us is, like I said, a natural process, and nothing to fear. When things get overwhelming we need to slow down and create a stable datum, meaning we pick out something from the confusion, it doesn't matter what it is, and start working on that. Then we take the next thing, the next thing and so on, one thing at the time, and after a while we'll notice that we are not so overwhelmed anymore, but in fact feel better than we did before we got overwhelmed. It is the state of doing nothing that keeps us in confusion. When we are resolving such major issues which we are dealing with, sometimes causing a person to become overwhelmed, and trigger their worst anxieties, they are healing their timelines, our energy grids. And this is exactly what we need to do in order to become multi-D. What is popping up in front of us, sometimes as huge problems, is exactly what we need to confront, because if we do, we are not only solving the problem in present time, but across the timelines. Now, there's only one major problem, of course, you may say, isn't there always? Normally, in a standard 3D situation on a standard 3D world, where evolution takes its time and moves forward, it takes the time it takes, 
but when the species has played their script until the end, everybody is free to move on, empowered and armed with a very useful and beneficial experience in the realm of matter. Now they can start exploring the universe and all the dimensions, and unite with other star beings and star races out there who are excited to get to know the new race which has graduated and now has the experience needed to become galactic citizens. All is well, and those who want to can then eventually start creating their own script and start seeding their own worlds with some help from the goddess. So, what's the problem, then? Well, when the founders create within all these energy grids, which are like the tracks on a DVD, they have to lock in each track or grid, so that the 3D beings who are evolving won't experience the chaos that would be the consequence if they had access to all the grids at once, their biological neurology in 3D wouldn't allow it. So it's normal to lock in the beings on a dense world of matter to protect them, like a quarantine of sorts. Then, at the end of a cycle, a code was programmed within their DNA in the creation stage, and this code works like a key which automatically unlocks the next energy grid, the next track on the DVD, so the soul group can start a new cycle. The problem with us is that we were unfortunate enough to encounter the Syrian overlords. One of the major thing they did to us was to lock us into one single grid and throw away the key. What does that mean? It means that we are living in a time loop. We are reliving a DVD track over and over again. At the end of a cycle, we're supposed to move on to the next, but the way the Syrians did it was not to give us access to the continuing grid, which would have led to the stars, making us into gods, just like them. Consequently, we have access to this particular grid we are currently experiencing, from beginning to end, and all the grids before that, but none of those which are supposed to follow after that, while optimally, if we weren't under the control of this oppressive star race, we would have reached the stars ages ago. I am not even sure how many times we have re-experienced the same energy grid, it could have been twice, it could have been ten times, or it could have been a lot more. Each time we rewind the DVD and start all over, we change the plot to some degree because of our individual thoughts and actions, but the basic of the plot remains the same. This is also where the recycling of souls and the amnesia implants come into play. They don't want us to realize that we live the same thing over and over again, because then we may get the idea, God forbid, that we want to break loose and peek into the future instead of the past, and perhaps one day reach the stars.